Hello, uh, this is a screencast to explain uh, the command stset in stata. This is the command that uh, is used for survival time analysis or event history analysis. We will use Ashgen Court data. This data contains uh, several variables, the ID, date of birth, sex, date, beg, which is the date at the beginning of the episode, even date, which is the date at the end of the episode, even code, the following event, and a variable that was created before, as shown in a previous screencast, the variable residence. It's simply coded zero when the person was not a resident, and coded one when the person was a resident at the time of the event, which is stored in event code. So assuming that uh, this variable is right, and I must issue a warning here, if your residence variable is wrong, all that comes next will be two. So assuming that residence is right, then we have to create a censoring variable for out migration. Because we computed residence using a six month threshold, then the censoring variable will account for these six month threshold. So in case sensor out was already computed, we want to drop it and recompute it th that way. It is computed for each individual and the records are ranked by even date. We generate the variable sensor out, the censoring variable, when even code is equal to four, that is, there is an out migration, and the following uh, residence is zero, meaning the following episode is a non-resident episode. The variable is computed for peers of residence only, that is, the out-migration occurred at the end of a residency episode. So it's very important that you add this condition if residence equals 1. So let's do that and count the number of events in our file. Here we have about 121,000 sensor out equals 1 meaning 121,000 out-migration recorded in our data file. Before introducing to ST sets, um, I must uh, tell you about the scale of the analysis time. You remember that um, events are recorded to the day and actually to the millisecond in a day. Of course, we won't use the millisecond part of it, but it's the format that is imposed by Stata when we want to go below the day. The equivalent of one year in millisecond is this number. And this number is computed by simply multiplying the average number of days in a year, multiply by 24, 24 hours, multiply by 60 Minutes multiply by 60 seconds multiply by a thousand milliseconds. To declare the data to be suitable for EHA, also called survival time analysis, hence the use of ST as an abbreviation before any survival time command, we used the command ST set. For a non-renewable event, uh, if we want to account for only the first event in a series, we will use this syntax. This syntax reads, ST set, the event date, which is the date at the time of the event, if residence equals 1, meaning that we'll account for only episodes for which residence equals 1, meaning we will account only for residency episode. And then there is a series of, of options after the comma. The first option is ID. Of course, we need to relate several records for the same individual through an identifier. Then we have another option, which is our failure. In Stata language, it means failure 
means actually the event. And the event is defined when sensor out is equal to 1. When it's not equal to 1, the failure will be considered as 0, meaning there is a censoring at the end of, an, of the observation. Then you have another option, which is origin. This tells you that the analysis time will be actually beginning at the time of birth for any individual. So this is really telling you about the scale on which you will be working, which will be the, the time since birth, that is the age. Another option here is scale. Here you will notice that we use as a scale the number that we computed here, the number of milliseconds in an average year. To tell Stata to produce the results in terms of year, and because we specify origin time being date of birth, in terms of year since birth. Another option here is time zero, which is telling you what is the time at the beginning of the episode. In Stata Manual, they tell you that time zero is rarely used. Don't believe them. You will have to use it any time you run an ST set with a long format data. So time zero here is um, specifying the variable, giving you the date at the beginning of each episode. Let's run this command. Considering the, the size of the data sets, this command takes quite some time. Here you are. Let's read uh, the output of this command. First, there is a reminder here that um, the identifier for each uh, individual is ID. The failure event is defined when sensor out is equal to 1. The observation time intervals tell you the duration of each episode. The duration of each episode is defined by the difference between date bag and even date. This tells you that uh, the event will occur at failure, which is pretty obvious. The time of analysis is the time defined as even date minus the origin, which um, is defined here as date of birth. The T4 analysis will be time less origin divided by the number that we specified in the scale option. So this will actually be expressed in terms of years since birth, that is, since the origin time. Here also is a reminder that you selected for analysis only episodes with residence equals to 1. Now, we initially have more than 600,000 observations in our dataset. These are not individuals. These are, these are just a number of records in your dataset. Some observation will be deleted because of an, the if, that is, when residence is not equal to 1, then the observations will be ignored at outset. Here, there is um, an error message telling you that for some cases, date bag is actually equal to even date. This is a message telling you that there is a probable error when date bag is greater than even date. In effect, the error can occur because date bag is equal, not only greater than even date. This would occur when two events took place at the same date exactly. It shouldn't be, but it happens sometimes, and we have only five cases, which is not too bad. Um, here is an indication that you have a number of observations occurring after the event took place. This is because actually out-migration can occur after a first out-migration. People can get out of the study area, come back, and go again outside the study area. 
All these observations have been eliminated from our uh, data set for analysis and there are uh, this much observations remaining for analysis. They represent 183,000 individuals or subjects here and these individuals experienced 115,000 failures meaning event and there is a reminder here that you consider that it was only single failure that is a single event per individual. Stata also computes the total analysis time at risk and under observation which is more than 1,267,000 years. The earliest possible time at risk is zero as expected here it means that we observe people from their birth and the earliest the observed entry time is also zero and we um, observe people until they were reaching 123 years. It looks very unlikely here that we have someone aged 123 but it can be due to some errors and actually it's probably one or two individuals that are going beyond uh, 110 years old. So we won't pay too much attention to that high number and very unlikely number. I've told you that um, out migration is actually a renewable event. So there can be two, three or more out migration for the same individual. We account for that with this command. This command is exactly the same as the previous one except for an option here which is exit. The exit option has a very peculiar syntax. You simply put time and a dot. A dot means either missing or infinity. In a cryptic way I must say uh, Stata is telling you that there is no limit in time after the event took place, meaning that an individual is always at risk after experiencing a first event and maybe a second or a third. So that's what we call renewable event or repeatable event. Thank you for your attention.